Now, here in chapter 10, what we have is, and it goes all into chapter 11, that the people were substituting something for God. And people always have substitutes for God. If you are not worshiping God, the living God today, and I don't care who you are, you have a God. It may be yourself. A great many people are great at worshiping self. And there are a great many folk that worship money. Some worship fame. Some will sell their honor and sell their lives in order to attain some unworthy goal. Some are willing to be dishonest to become rich. We have many substitutes for God. Now, Jeremiah is going to talk about that. Listen to him. Chapter 10, verse 1, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. The public is running after the zodiac. And it's got so in every paper and on newscasts today, and we like to know what sign so-and-so was born under, and all that nonsense. And it's being given out in papers and being given out on the radio and television as if this is something genuine. You see, people have substitutes for God. If you won't worship the living and true God, then you're going to start looking at the stars and you're going in for all of that foolishness today. And I say it's foolishness. Now, God says, "...learn not the way of the heathen." After all, the astrologers, those wise men that came out of the East to worship Jesus, they knew more about the stars than this crowd does today because they've just picked up this that has come from the pagan heathen world. Now, will you notice, he says, "...for the customs of the people are vain, they're empty. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe." They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Now, may I say this, and I'd like to say it kindly, but it's so utterly preposterous and ridiculous that I must emphasize that a great many people say this is the reason you shouldn't have Christmas trees, for that's what he's talking about. Well, now, to begin with, Jeremiah's talking to his people about idolatry. And nobody had a Christmas tree in that day. This has no reference to a Christmas tree. It has reference to the fact that this man, Jeremiah, is in bitter irony. He's ridiculing the idolatry of the day. He says, you go out in the woods, you cut down a tree. And the thing that you do, Isaiah said, actually, you could use part of it to make a fire and warm yourself, and you could cook your meal on part of it. And he said, that would be a pretty good part of the tree. But to fall down and worship the thing that you've made, and the thing that they do here, they cut down it, they shape it, and they make of it an image, and they deck it with silver and with gold, and they fasten it with nails and hammers. That's their God. This is an idol that he's talking about here. And what he's really saying is, you're worshiping a scarecrow. Now, friends, if at Christmas time you get down before your Christmas tree and start bowing before it and worshiping it, I would say that this could have reference to you. But I don't even know uh, any unsaved pagan in our country today that worships a Christmas tree. They all put it up, but they don't worship it. They understand it's more or less of a decoration. It means practically nothing to them other than that. But this is idolatry. Now, a great many people today worship at Christmas time themselves, and, oh, it's what I can get, not what I can give. That's important. And these are the things. Now, he goes on to say here, Verse 6, For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. In other words, they turn from the living and true God, and they begin to worship these things around, the stars, the zodiac. And they must get these little cards. I guess they're cards or papers they send out today, or they can buy, and it shows what your future is going to be, which, of course, it doesn't. 
Then God goes on to say here, verse 11, Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. He says, these gods, they didn't create this universe. Our God, the living God, created it. Verse 12, He hath made the earth by His power. He hath established the world by His wisdom. And He hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. In other words, those stars are up there in the places they're in because God put them there. And that's where he wanted them. And he didn't put them where I want them. He put them where he wanted them. And this is his universe. And he's the one to be worshipped. And we call ourselves civilized today. And we find ourselves giving ourselves to that which does not help at all. A little zodiac. Can you imagine intelligent people dealing with that kind of thing in this matter of fortune-telling and all of that? Why not worship the living and the true God and get into big business today? He says here, verse 23, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man that walketh to direct his steps. No man apart from the revelation of God from the Word of God can walk aright. The minute you turn from the Word of God, you're going out on a detour. That's natural, and we begin that way. I took my little grandson when he was learning to walk for a walk, and he and I walk around the block. And I want to say this. He's a wonderful little fellow. I wish I had 45 minutes to tell you about it. But I want to tell you, when I got back, I was worn out. You know Why? Every sidewalk we came to, he wanted to go up there. You come to a driveway, he wants to run out in the street. When you get to a corner, he wants to go the wrong way. I have never seen a little fella that wanted to go as many wrong ways as he wanted to go. And finally, when I got back one time, I looked at him and I called him by name. I said, you know, Kim, you're just like your grandfather. When he got away from the Word of God, he always went down a detour. May I say to you, it's not in man to direct his steps. Now, this is perfect. I, I did not plan this. This is absolutely perfect. I forgot that every year, this is what they do. But because of the, the purposes of making my video, I want to show you this. So the workmen, <clears throat> they, they went out wherever they go get these pine trees from, and they cut them down. Yes, they do cut them down. And people are going to go there, shop for a tree that they like, and put it on their, um, put it on top of their vehicle, or push it inside of their vehicle, or put it in the back of their, their pickup truck. And <clears throat> they're going to bring it home. And yes, when, when you read it in the wrong way, when you read Jeremiah 10 in the wrong context, it sounds like, it seems like, it looks like, oh, they're going to go take the tree, and I see it right here. They're going to prop it up so that it does not fall. Well, yeah, I mean, the tree was cut out of the ground. The roots were cut off. Roots is what hold the tree up in the ground. I mean, how else is it supposed to stand up and now? You've you got to, you know, create, uh, I believe it's called stilts. And then yes they are going to deck it with festivities on it and decorations on it and you know the the, the, the glitter balls and um some stars and you know put their loved ones pictures on there or their friends pictures up there and you know whatever have you but still none of that none of that ends up where the persons tech themselves, fling down themselves upon the ground, throw themselves down or bow themselves down on the floor and bow down to a pine tree and worship it. I mean, the key verse um, or the key phrases, words is where Jeremiah says that they carve, they carve. So what are they carving? It's like what Pastor McGee is saying. They're going to shape the tree into their imagined, um, their imagination 
or whatever deity they believe in. So, you know, for all of you who are trying to tie in old pagan practices and Christians shouldn't be, you know, observing and practicing Christmas because it's pagan and idolatry, honestly, you're, you're reaching. You're really reaching. You're really trying to create something that that is not happening. Now, if we're talking about spiritual idolatry of, well, the commercialization of Christmas and, okay, we, we, got, a, we got a discussion there. But, I mean, what Jeremiah is talking about is something that these people do year round. Ain't nobody worshiping and celebrating Christmas year round. So, yeah, you, you can you can just stop with all that. Just stop. Y'all y'all reaching. You know what I'm saying if you don't want to observe Christmas and you don't want to celebrate Christmas, and listen, it there is there is a spirit of joy in the season. There really is. There really is. You know you know you understand what I said. So that being said, if you fighting against joy and happiness and getting together and just loving on each other, then something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. You fighting against joy. And the songs. I mean, the Christmas songs, they're about joy and love and peace on earth. And a lot of them even mentions Jesus Christ. Okay, fine. Yes, he wasn't born Christmas. Come on, man. We know that. And those who don't know that, they will know that. They should know that he was not born December 25th. At the end of the day, what does it matter? What does it matter? That's not the point. Him being born is 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 really not important. Glad that he came into the world, yes. Because we were lost and dead in our sins and trespasses, and we didn't even know it. And Jesus came. If anything, I mean, which other God, which other God left from wherever they are, where, wherever they reside, left their, their place of wherever that is and gave up their kingdomship or gave up their, their position to live amongst the people that venerate them. Which other God? None. None. You know why there's none? Because there's only one God. And even he said, there's none before me. There's none after me. I am the only. And that is Jesus Christ. He said he's Alpha and Omega. He says he's beginning and the end. So ain't nobody before him. Ain't no other gods after him. And there's no other God in the middle of him. Right? Come again. That's why the scripture come back and says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is master. He's Lord. He's Adonai. 